Okay, I'm not sure if um, other people got booted off, but I did, um, and I guess Barry will be back in a moment. Let's wait and see when he shows up. Where's the keys for your car? Okay, hopefully he's coming back really quick. Sorry, guys. I can see you're there, so that's good. Hang on. Actually, the quiz was going along pretty good there, and then um, it just dropped off for me. It's too bad that Barry dropped off too. Um, I just uh, going to see if he's trying to get hold of me here on my my phone. See, if maybe he's gonna text me. Let's see what's going on here. No, I don't see anything. So we'll just have to hang tough for a couple of minutes. Yeah, David, I can see your your uh, your texting there. Um, yeah, he'll be back in just a minute. Maybe uh, you just type in the chat area there. Um, are you finding the test or the review for the test? Um, okay. Um, any questions about any of those things? Maybe I can help you help you with in the meantime. Just go ahead and text. I want to make sure you can actually see. I know it always takes 30 seconds. The 30 second delay for when you hear or see me. Or from when when I talk or etc. to when it shows up for you. Okay, I'll try sending him a a message to what's going on here. I don't see anything. Well, maybe his internet went down completely. I don't know. Did anybody find it to be a little bit too small to tell uh, from the pictures what it was? It was too small, just right too small. Um, and it was okay, just right okay. Yeah, Mario, there's always a 30-second delay, at least, from when when the speakers speak to when when you will hear it on this program. Um, <laughs> hope you guys have been busy. Hope things are going well for you. Um, I know up here in the Great White North, as we call it, um, we've been really busy. Um, just a uh, word of encouragement for you. Um, you know, I, gosh, last, must be at least a year ago, I had a client that came in and um, had some nice rugs. And uh, they didn't want to do appraisals. They're like, ah, oh, no, it's too much money. You know, gosh, I can't afford it right now. Well, guess what? They're back in. They've sent me in three rugs for cleaning, repairs, and for appraisals. Um, so, you know, just keep planting those seeds is my, my word of encouragement to you. Just, you know, plant the seed, let them know you can solve problems and you can take care of things. And sooner or later, many of them will come through. You know, they'll, these are people who really care about their, their, uh, 
all their special rugs. And um, if they do, um, chances are they're going to want you to do things like have the rug appraised. Um, Barry and I were actually <laughs> – let me back up. I can do that, Mike. Um, how's that? Um, yeah, um, you can um, – Actually, Barry and I were talking today about how to make it a little bit easier um, to um, facilitate the appraisal. There he is. Hi, Barry. Yeah, so what point did I cut out at? Because I had no way of knowing I was not on. Um, gosh, uh, I'd say maybe up to slide 10 or 12, you know, Dustin, perhaps. This, this software is maybe is just as bad or worse than the other software. This is... This is just such a deep disappointment. Um, let's try it again. So David says uh, that the size was okay. Um, he could um, he could make out the, the pictures of the rugs for the for the quiz for the test. Um, so he's okay with that. Oh, that's wonderful. Hopefully the others are now, Everybody as well. has got an, a copy of the PowerPoint um, and a copy of the answer sheet. So everybody <laughs> ought to be able to... Um, um, now, um, let's see. Do you see slide number nine? Not yet. I'll tell you when I see it showing up. Oh, let me make sure. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, tell me when you see something. I see slide number nine. Okay, did we do this one yet? Yes, we did. Okay. Did we do the number 10 with the birds? We did, yeah. 11? We did, yes. Keep going. 12? Keep going. 13? Keep going. 14? Keep going. 15? Uh, keep going. 16? Keep going. 17. Um, I think we didn't do this one. Um, so okay. there you go. Let's, 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 let's start here. I pointed out that this would be the perfect rug for Rug Badger Manor because of the Rug Badger red field it has. And I thought that you would be attracted by its beautiful French style. But this rug is made in Iran. So it's a Persian rug. It's got a French style. Is it A, a Kerman, B, Mashad, or C, Tabriz? Dusty, can you see this fitting into uh, beautiful rug badger manner? Um, no, it's not my style, but uh, sure, it's a beautiful rug. All right. <laughs> Number 18, formal Persian. So it's a Persian city rug with a blue-red lac insect dye. Think back to what we did in the class on Persian rugs and when we got to the subject of insect dyes. The blue red lac insect dye. Is this rug a Mashad, a Saruk, or a Shiraz? Number 19. It's Persian matter red, but painted blue red. So it started out with a matter red, an orangey matter red, but they painted it blue red. Is it from Kashan? Yazd, or is it a Saruk? Number number 20. It's an antique Saruk, but what type? Is it a Farahan rug, is it a Mohajaran rug, or is it a Laver rug? This is antique. This is back, you know, 1880 to 1890. It's a Saruk type, which means it came from a rock province. Is it a Farahan rug? a Mahajaran rug, or a Laver rug. 
And we could also say that you may also hear, hear heard it said Farahan Saruk or Mohajaran Saruk or Laver Saruk. Number 21, it's got a willow and cypress border. And the border says to us that it is either Tabriz, Bijar, or Konya Turkish. So look at the field. Then look at the border. What does the border tell us? Okay. And it's either going to be A, Tabriz, B, Bijar, or C, Konya. Still there, Dusty? Hello? Dusty, keep going. Me? Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing you just fine. Yep, go it's ahead. Terrible software. I just don't know what's going to happen next. Um, yeah, I was just muted. That was all. All right. Now, um, I know you probably snuck out to get a beer or some things, but that's fine. We don't mind. We know how Canadians are about that sort of thing. All right. Can you see number 22, the Chinese rug? Yes. Is it A, a Ming Dynasty rug, B, an Art Deco rug, or C, a 90-line Aubusson? And when I say Aubusson, I mean Chinese Aubusson, an Aubusson copy. But is it a Ming Dynasty rug, is it an Art Deco rug, or is it a 90-line Aubusson, A, B, or C? Number 23. The first Ming emperor. If you remember, we looked at this fellow sitting on the on the handwoven rug, the hoi rug. Is this person that we're looking at? Is this picture? Is this Hong Wu emperor? Is this the emperor Palpatine, or is this Emperor <laughs> Ming the Merciless? You guys have to decide for yourself. Hong Wu emperor, <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. Or Emperor Ming the Merciless. All right. Barry, this is way too. This is too hard. <laughs> Why are you doing these hard questions like this? Because maybe somebody will go to um, 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 Google and type in Hong Wu and find out if it's Hong Wu, or type in Ming the Merciless and find out if Ming the Merciless was the first Ming emperor. These are good, valid questions. We need. I need these guys just stretching their minds a little bit. You know, they're not... I go for Genghis Khan. Well, it could be Genghis Khan, but it's not. It's, it actually looks rather like Genghis Khan. All right. Number 24. It's the back of a... Is it a Tianjin Chinese rug? Is it B, a Persian <laughs> rug? Or C, is it... <laughs> Is it is it machine made? So I want you guys to concentrate as hard as you can and try and use all your powers of detection and um, ferret out the 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 question: Is it a Tianjin Chinese rug, a Persian rug, or is it machine made? Okay, Barry. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is it okay for them to pick up their laptop and turn it ninety degrees um, clockwise, or is that cheating? Um, actually, they can they can do virtually anything they want as long you know they can even work in groups. They can work with the other people who <laughs> took the class. They can consult each other. They can use Google. They can use the internet. They can go to Spongo Bongo. They can post questions in in Rug ID. The point of this is, I need you guys to think about these things. Some of these are outstandingly easy. Some of these are fairly tough. I want you to hit the whole thing. I don't want you to feel like, oh, I can't get any of these. Some of these you'll be able to spot. Some of them, the answer will be right there in front of your face. And others you'll have to do some research on. If you do the research, if you will look, if you will work with your neighbors, if you will try hard, I believe that this will translate into additional income, additional revenue for you at your business, over a sustained period of time. This will put money in your pocket. 
So that's why I'm doing it. Plus, I checked Gary. with a teacher who told me that this is a great way to get people to remember things. Dusty? I know you didn't, you didn't add it as a, as a question here, but I'm going to throw one in here. Um, on this particular rug, what particular um, political persuasion uh, were the people that nodded this rug? Okay, A, uh, Democrat, B, Republican, or C, Communist? That's a very good That's question. I wonder if they were sipping lattes when they wove this rug. Well, you know, if it's and I'm <laughs> the 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 um the hint is um the um the rows all line up so perfectly. There you go. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Now let's go to let's go to the next rug, number twenty five. It's got tall gu tall gulls and fewer borders and a lower knot count. Is it old? Is it new? Or is it Swiss? Okay. <laughs> Look at this rug and say to yourself, is this old? Is this antique? Is this an ancient rug? Or is this a new rug? Was this made in the last, you know, 5, 10, 15 years? Or was it made in Switzerland? All right. Well, it'll be tough, but I think most of you can get this one. Number 26, this, pr this prayer rug is from Turkey, from Pakbokaristan, or from Middle Amudaria. So Turkey, Pakbokaristan, or Middle Amudaria. And Dusty, don't blurt out the answer, although I know what you think it is. All right, number 27. This rug is loved by one or more of these groups. Is it loved by collectors, museum curators, beginners, or A and B, collectors and museum curators together. So look at the rug carefully and go with your gut hunch. Is it loved by collectors, museum curators, beginners, or collectors and museum curators? Number 28, this type of knot, I want you to look at this chart. We've looked at knot charts throughout the whole class. This is a fairly recent one. Is it A, Persian, B, Tibet, or C, Turkish? It is one of those. Number 29, the essay question. What have I learned that helped me in business? What I want you to talk about is what you got out of this class, what you've been able to apply um, to work, does it, has it helped you understand anything more about the rugs you're washing? Has it helped you to talk any more with the customers that you're dealing with? Do you feel any more confident? What, what have you learned that's helped you? So write a paragraph or two on that. The more you give us, the more I'll be able to tune this course and make it more beneficial in the future. Number 30, the last question. Who is this? Is this A, James M. Kashishian, B, Mark Sampson Kashishian, or, uh, or C, Harold Mark Kashishian? Now, I'm going to give you guys a clue. I don't usually give clues on this, but the clue is it is a Kashishian. Which one is it? James, Mark, or Harold? And my son just came up, was pointing at the screen, Mickey, and um, he was able to pick it out. So if Mickey, who didn't take the class, can recognize this, well, I think it's a safe one. And that takes us through. What I'd like you to do is try and get this back to me within the next week. You can um, do whatever it takes to pass this class. If you make um, um, mistakes, I will uh, grade it, tell you where you screwed up, and I'll let you um, uh, go out and find the correct answer. Um, it's important to me that you learn some of these things and hold them in so that you can use them in the future. Um, Dusty, any questions? No questions. I think um, that worked good. This, uh, you know, there's some challenging questions here. I'm going to have to do my homework. There's stuff I didn't, I didn't, I missed somehow. I, um, I'm going to have to. 
work at this. Uh, of course, there's some you know. pretty easy ones. Oh, but, sure. Um, but and it's, uh, bottom, bottom, yeah, the bottom line is uh, I know this is going to help me in my business. You know, I already, already know a fair bit, but heck, I definitely need to learn a lot more. And um, the more I know, the more people with very fine rust trust me. You saw the, the couple pictures that I put up today, um, actually several pictures of three rugs. Of people, you know, I, I planted the seed a while back about having appraisals done. And, you know, they gave me a phone call. They said, hey, we want to get some appraisals done and cleaning and repairs. But, you know, before they said no to appraisals, now they're saying yes because, well, bottom line is I, I think it's because they trust me. And, you know, this lady, I know she did her homework too because, um, gosh, it must have been about three years ago was the first time I heard from her. And she was deeply suspicious of who was going to handle her rugs. And I got to tell you, I was up against some pretty stiff competition, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, tell you, um, I'll give you a hint. Um, they used great big blue tub, and uh, you know it was really easy for me to get the business because I just mentioned to her, I said, you know, when we clean your rugs, unlike these other fellows that you you say you're thinking about maybe hiring, said, you know, we're going to clean your rugs one at a time individually by themselves. We're not going to let your rugs swim around with someone else's rugs, and we're never going to use any bleaching agents when we clean the rugs. And, um, you know, she didn't actually hire us right away. She continued to do a little bit more research, and then, well, now she's obviously a great customer. But, you know, it was between, it was up, it was either going to be us or it was going to be the Blue Boys. And um, when I was able just to explain that those big machines that you throw all the rugs in aren't so great, maybe, bingo, we got it. And now we're getting, we're getting all our rugs. So. Yeah, um, you know, Dusty, on one of the carpet cleaning um, lists, there was a question about three-tier marketing. And the question was, should I use it? Is it effective? That sort of thing. And... Yes, it can be effective. Yes, it's worked for people, but it is a stopgap effort. It's basically saying carpet cleaning is is just is just is just a commodity. I am no different than any other carpet cleaner. What package would you like? And in rugs, we see that doesn't work. We need to establish ourselves as the expert. We need to market with authority. And that's why I use the term authority marketing. When you have the full package, when you can talk to them about their rugs in a meaningful way, when you can make observations about their rugs that resonate with them, when you can talk to them about safe cleaning, when you can talk to them about doing appraisals, when you can talk to them about taking care of special problems, when you can talk to them as an expert, they, they, they will listen to you, and then you don't have to offer them a package. You don't offer, ha have to offer them bronze, silver, gold. You don't have to throw in a diamond super deluxe plan. All you have to say is, well, Dusty, looking at this rug, see we have this and this and this, and you go through the pre-inspection, and you say what I'm going to recommend is, and then take them through what you recommend. You're going to make out an awful lot better than three-tier packaging. That's so that's so 1990s. I mean, what do you do? Put on Madonna records whenever you go to three-tier marketing? Um, I, we need to cultivate the aura of being the expert. And the more expert we are, the better we'll do in this business. Would you agree, Dusty? Absolutely. And it's, it's, an, ongoing, it's an ongoing process. You, you never really – well – I, I guess it is, you know, as soon as you think that you got there, well, then someone else is going to become better than you and they're going to surpass you. You need to continue on this education curve because I, I, I like to uh, kind of relate to, uh, you know, rugs are like, it's kind of like wine, you know. You, there can be wine experts, but nobody is ever the, you know, knows everything about wine, you know. Mm -hmm. It's something that they continue to learn, they savor it, and they, I, I don't know. There's there's an awful lot to go that goes on with wine, and rugs are very much like that. Maybe even more so uh, than wine. We just so had it's a fascinating thing. We just had an interesting thing. I'm also moderate the group Cool Cool Old Rugs, which 
everybody so, in, in this is welcome to join. Um, somebody posted a picture of an older rug. Um, it was an old flat weave, and it had some definite, definitely reminded some people of, um, some people thought it was Mexican. What is that, Zapotec or whatever? Some people thought it was Peruvian. Some people thought that it was Turkish. Other people thought, um, uh, like, uh, I was wondering if it could be coochie, but it wasn't thick enough to be coochie. I mean, here we had more than 70 posts about a rug from some of the top dealers and experts around the world. Some people who, who are well-known, who have been published, who have written books, are weighing in and talking about this rug. And finally, Alberto Borolivi, a, a, a noted scholar and expert, pointed out that the rug was Sardinian. I had to look up on a map where Sardinia is. I never heard of Sardinia before. You know, the idea that one person knows everything is completely ridiculous. I mean, um, here we had some of the top experts in the world participating in discussion of a piece, and all of us got it wrong until Alberto came in with, a, uh, with the attribution of Sardinia. So we keep on learning. This is a lifelong effort. What you'll find now is that you will be able to learn simple things, but as, we, as you move forward, more and more of what we went over in this class will become apparent to you, and will give you a framework to look back upon and say, oh, that's what Barry meant, and that'll help you do more business. So I think it's a positive and beneficial thing. Were there any interesting questions I missed from the audience? I didn't see any, Barry. Um, let me just take a look to see if um, if I missed anything. Um, some people just made comments as we went. Maro asked if we're going to be recording, and yes, we definitely are recording this. Um, it's I suspect the recording is going to be broken up, though, because um, because Barry and I got kicked off. That means the, the recording gets broken um, into two parts, but that's not a really big problem. Um, yeah, no, I think that's it, Barry. I don't see anything. Excellent. So feel free to post questions in Rug ID. And I want to thank everybody for being here and wish you a good night. Okay, thank you very much, Barry. Take care now, Dustin. You have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody.